Hi, my name is Kira, and I'm a friend of Rupert. Perhaps you've heard of Rupert time and time again. Maybe you know him and are already his friend. Or maybe somehow you've missed all of his tales. You've missed his fun and lessons and all the details. I will tell you, Rupert is a rabbit. He's furry, brown, and young. And it seems no matter how much he's learned, his lessons have just begun. Come along with Rupert as he learns about the Wheel of the Year. And excuse me if I giggle when I ask you to lend me your ear. <laughs> Although, Beltane is not where most people would probably choose to start. That's exactly where Rupert showed up in my dream and in my heart. And perhaps that exactly that is exactly the very place to begin. What Rupert learns is that love is the best place to start. Let's listen in. Beltane is a very special time of year, meant to celebrate passion and love, so that people will remember to take the time to make their lives below, as it is above. The people you see here dancing around their May Eve fire, they are celebrating their own very human and very sacred desire. From shaking hands to caressing a child's sleeping face, touching each other is a natural thing to do among the human race. This and more is what our furry friend learns in a very special place, from she who has many names and from he who has green leaves for his face. In the books and in the pages, Rupert goes on to learn about the longest day. In this second tale, he meets a color-changing fairy along the way. Today is the longest day of the year, she said, when the sun takes a very long time to lay down his head. It's time, the fairy told him, for a change of the seasons, though it will be a while before you feel the reasons. There's, that's the nature of nature. There isn't anything wrong. The days will grow shorter, and the nights will grow long. You may believe me when I tell you he would rather the weather stayed hot. The fairy reminded him the days would turn cold whether he liked it or not. Our furry friend isn't always happy to learn things along the way, but learn things, yes he does, and sometimes in the most marvelous of ways. At Lamas, he hid near a tree to listen to a crone that was very wise, who answered children's questions about all the winds and the wares and the whys. Lamas is a time for many things, she began. You can celebrate however you want. Oh yes, you can. There are those who remember the Sun King named Lu. His power begins to weaken now, just like it's supposed to. After the solstice of summer has passed us by, his presence and warmth slowly fades from the sky. And so some are sad at this time each year, thinking of the cold to come, some shed their tears. There are those, too, who remember days filled with the sun, with laughter and love and long days of fun. So no matter if you cry or laugh, whatever you choose to do, there are many who honor the god named Lou. <clears throat> At the end of her tale, she sends the children away, and they are alone. You'll have to read the story, though, to find out what he's given by the crown. The last of our stories of the four Sabbaths, which are covered in Book One, is about Mabel and how Rupert helps Mar Melvin get his harvest done. The weather starts to cool, and many plants turn to brown from green. It's not the beginning of the year or the end, but somewhere in between. People use this day to welcome the beginning of the end of the year and to praise the Lord and Lady for all the blessings they hold dear. Melvin the Mouse is sometimes very bossy, sometimes very wise. Seldom does Rupert meet his, this little friend without ending up with a surprise. This last tale is no exception to the rule for Rupert and his small friend, for even though Rupert has a choice to make, he is happy in the end. So we've come to the end of the book, but no worries, no fears. We have four more tales to read, to go, in the Wheel of the Year. It's book two. Samhain is up next, where Rupert meets a little girl. Becky is her name. She recently lost her grandmother, so her world will never be the same. He hadn't seen a little girl come from behind. He hadn't heard her make a noise of any kind. She was suddenly right beside him, just right there, as if she had appeared from poof right out of thin air. She 
she'd reached down and drawn him into her small arms, and somehow he knew she didn't mean him any harm. She had hair that was dark yellow, like some wheat he'd once seen, and she was wearing a ribbon on her wrist that was green. She had pressed her small nose into the fur of his ears, and then it had begun. The quiet sniffles and tears. Then Rupert watched a woman come walking through the trees, and thought just for a moment, perhaps he should flee. She was somewhere between short and tall, as people go, wearing a long skirt and a silver ring on one toe. She looked at the girl and said, We've been looking for you. Come join us in circle and bring your little friend too. And so Rupert learned a lot about people, this time about people and their tears. He also learned the about the special toy on the Wheel of the Year. Our second tale this time around is uh, about the year's longest night. Our second tale in the first book was about the longest day. That's right. Rupert smiled to himself, leaning closer and stretching out one long ear. He was eager to learn more about the Sabbath and the wheel of the year. The bright star, one boy called out, way all the way at the top of the tree. Mistletoe, said Emily with a green scarf, where my daddy kisses me. The garland and yule log, and remember the wreath too. These were all things that to Rupert were quite strange and new. We'll start with the star, said Stacy, way at the top of the tree. Do any of you know what it is? Can anyone tell me? Yes, yes they could. These children learned a lot that night, and Rupert did too. There, there are eight stories about the Sabbaths in these two books, just waiting for you. At Imbo, which comes next, Rupert meets a new friend with bright, sparkly wings. The fairy invites him to learn about milk and brooms and all kinds of strange things. For people, my friend, Imbolc can be so many different things, the fairy said, twisting and turning and fluttering his wings. Halfway between Yule and Ostara, winter is on its way out, but still the dark time of the year and cold, there is no doubt. Imbolc reminds us that spring is coming before very long and gives us a chance to raise our voices and chant and in song. Rupert even learns how some awaken the spirits of spring by making lots of noise with pots and pans of all things. <laughs> and then at long last, we, we come to the last story in book two. Here God and Goddess have a surprise in store for Rupert and for you too. The sun was high, spring had sprung, and it was a beautiful day. The Lord and the Lady were with him where he always hoped to stay. There was a sound that came from the over the last hill, one that made his heart stop and gave him a happy thrill. He could hear the distant drums calling, Come on, come all! But that's not what he was doing, oh no, not at all! No, that's not what he was doing, instead he was following his heart. And that, Rupert will tell you, is the very best place to start. Yes, in these tales and stories, you'll find Rupert has a lot to learn. So come on along with us as the wheel of the year makes its turn. Now, I've said all I'm going to say. I've done what I meant to do. Perhaps we'll see you at a Rupert's Tales and Tunes performance sometime soon, near you. Thanks for being a friend of Rupert. See you soon.